Welcome to this Betfair Europa League preview. We're looking ahead to the match between Udinese and Liverpool, which of course is not that important to Udinese, but key uh, to Liverpool. We'll be hearing from ESPN Stuart Robson, from Opta's Duncan Alexander as well, and also from our betting expert Alan Thompson. But I'm joined by the European football expert uh, Jonathan Wilson to discuss this. And this looks like a relatively simple equation, doesn't it? I mean, Udinese we know are out, uh, and Liverpool will probably need something. Yeah, I mean, if, if Liverpool win, they're, they're through. It's a relatively complex situation in that they need to match the result the young boys get against Angie. Uh, but if, if Liverpool win, then you know, that, that's it. They, they go through. I can't see why they would play a strong side. Liverpool can play as strong a side as they want to. Um, I think you'd, you'd, although Liverpool have possibly struggled to turn domination into, into wins in this tournament so far, I, I, I think they should be safe enough here. And another issue with Udinese, of course, is that you know half of the players that potentially could have been used and might have been dangerous are playing for Watford, and therefore you know their their B team is not as good as it might be anyway. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I mean, this has clearly been a transitional season for Udinese, which I, I think w was fairly predictable before the season began with the, you know, the players who'd left, um, but already out of the tournament. Realistically, what, what's what's their priority now? And it, it's it's got to be moving up Serie A, making sure relegation doesn't come into the equation. So, as long as Liverpool, you know, can find um, the penetration to go with the possession, I'm sure they'll have. Then I, I think. Yeah, comfortable Liverpool win. We'll get your views on Brennan Rodgers. I'm interested to hear that in a moment. But uh, let's get a statistical view of Udinese against Liverpool from Opta's Duncan Alexander. With Liverpool probably needing to win this game, they can look back on a record of scoring first in four of their five Europa League games this season, while Udinese have conceded first in all five of their matches. That said, seven of the nine goals that Liverpool conceded have come after half-time in the Europa League, while all seven of Udinese's goals have arrived after half-time. Finally, excluding qualifiers and games played on neutral territory, Liverpool have only ever won two games in Italy and have scored a grand total of three goals in nine games there. Well, there are Duncan's statistical thoughts and uh, I'm keen to hear Stuart Robson of ESPN's thoughts as well. He's watched a lot of Liverpool this season and indeed of Udinese. And here's what he thinks of Udinese against Liverpool. Team selection is key for this game. Liverpool in recent weeks, I think their front three have done really well. Luis Suarez right through the middle, scoring goals, looking creative. Enrique, surprise left-sided midfield player these days, has been scoring goals, he's been making good runs, he's linked up well with Suarez, been really dangerous. And of course on the right-hand side, uh, Sterling, who looks an outstanding player, making good pacey runs in behind Luis Suarez. But will they play? Because Brendan Rodgers hasn't played them in many of the Europa League games, so it means that the likes of Shelby, Asaidi, Joe Cole, Henderson have got to come to the fore. Sahin also playing in that midfield area. They have to play really well because Udinese, they can get a win. or They can go through if they get a good win here and they've got some good players. Fabrini plays behind Di Natale. Di Natale is the real threat. He's the one that makes the forward runs. And of course, if they don't succeed, they've got a centre forward who's really big. Renegi can come on. He's an outstanding header of the ball and can cause Liverpool problems. But I think Liverpool will do enough to get through. They may just about get a draw. So that's what uh, Stuart thinks. Uh, what do you make of Brendan Rodgers then at uh, Liverpool? I know we have a lot of viewers uh, from Liverpool on this <laughs> show. I mean, because there are, there are two potential views of him, aren't there? One is that he's some sort of uh, nascent tactical genius. The other is that he's a fraud. Yeah, and I think I fall somewhere in between the two. I, I thought you might say that. <laughs> um, my, my, my point, my, my question with him is... What are, we, what are we basing our um, verdict on? Half a season at Watford when he took them from fourth bottom to 13th in the Championship, which is great, you know, fine, that's a good start. Uh, you wouldn't give somebody a Liverpool job based on that, though. Did really badly at Reading. He was sacked by Christmas the, the half season he was there. Goes to Swansea, takes over the team from the seventh in the Championship, takes them the sixth, wins the, you know, gets through the playoffs. And then, you know, very good first season in the Premier League. But... You know, not hugely different to what, say, Paul Lambert did at Norwich. And when Paul Lambert had two promotions, not just one. And then think one place, maybe two places below Swansea last season. So it's the style of football he plays. That, that's what's attracted people. That's why he's got the reputation. Um, but we're seeing this season the, the difficulty of imposing that on a, on a team that hasn't been used to playing that way. Um, I think in terms of people who see him as a fraud, he really hasn't been helped by the, uh, by the documentary uh, about Liverpool. Do you really think that's made that much of a... Yeah, the impact, the, the nature of his team talks and that kind of thing. There's been so many laughable, quotable moments. Uh, that's, I, and you, because he, with these things, you don't know the editing. You don't know all the sense he might have talked, but they pick out the one line that makes him look a bit of an idiot, the one, one line that gets a laugh. Um, so he, he does unfortunately come across at times from the, the evidence of that documentary 
as being sort of a, a management speak wonk, a sort of David Brent figure in some ways. Um, but that's not to write him off. All I'm saying is that the evidence so far is quite sketchy, and he may well turn it to be, you know, to do very well. And now, actually, you know, in terms of the way Liverpool have played, I think they've played a lot better than the league position suggests this season. Yeah, they've been a little unfortunate. They miss yeah. a striker, don't they? Really really big problem. Exactly that. Ironically, exactly. if they had Antonio Di Natale in the side, he probably have scored twelve <laughs> goals already. But he probably won't play, I'm sure, um, against Liverpool. So, what what would be your correct score verdict then on Udinese Liverpool? Liverpool's Europa League games have been very high scoring, but this in a sort of half empty Friuli might be a bit different, mightn't it? Yeah, I mean, something like 2-0. I and mean, the other thing is, if Liverpool do score, why would they keep attacking? Just hold the ball. They're good enough to hold the ball. I can't see Neze chasing around particularly hard to get it back. So, 2-0, Liverpool. OK, well, nice and simple there uh, from Jonathan. Good to hear his thoughts as well on uh, Brendan Rodgers. I know it fascinates uh, a lot of people. I suspect that at some point he might be writing a book about him, but that's uh, <laughs> to come in the future after many other projects. Uh, let's get a betting view now, though, on Udinese against Liverpool from all that we've learned from uh, Alan Thompson. Udinese are already out of the competition, but Liverpool may still need a victory here to qualify. It all depends on what happens in Switzerland as well. Liverpool conceding in the final minutes last time around against young boys at Anfield could cost them dearly. Young boys are at home to Angie, who are without an away win in the competition. If young boys were to win that game, then Liverpool would need a victory in Udinese to qualify with a better head-to-head -head record. It's very difficult to know what sort of approach Brendan Rodgers will take in this game, and therefore, until the teams are announced, I would be very cautious. Liverpool games in this competition have produced an average of 3.8 goals per game, and Liverpool have scored in all but one of those games. The only time they failed to score was away in Russia against Angie. I would take Liverpool to score by backing 0-1, 0-2, 1-1, but I'd be then looking to get some insurance for that stake by backing over 2.5 goals, after about 20 minutes. Well, that's it from this Betfair Europa League preview, looking ahead to Udinese against Liverpool. My thanks to Duncan Alexander, to Stuart Robson, and indeed to Alan Thompson, of course to Jonathan Wilson uh, as well. And from me, Dave Farah, it's goodbye.